שלום עליכם. It's actually a dvar b'itom atov. It's a perfect timing to prepare for matan Torah. And these three days already we start shloshet emei agbala, the three days of separation, of preparation, where Am Yisrael is preparing for matan Torah. We understand that receiving the Torah is not something that just happens. It's something that requires tremendous, tremendous hachana. As a matter of fact, we see that of all of the mitzvot in the Torah, we don't find any other achana, like the achana to Matan Torah, seven entire weeks of preparation. And Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Shakol Nehiyah Bedvaro. Amen. Okay. We'll start somewhere in the middle. Hashem will take us in. The Ariyah Kadosh teaches that at the night of Leila Seder, the night that Hashem takes us out of Mitzrayim, our nation was in a very was in a very primal and very immature state. And if the maturity would come to them gradual, step by step, level by level, it would not be effective for their redemption. In order for the redemption to happen, the, all the entire levels, that means the absolute maturity had to happen in one night. Imagine a person growing, starting off their, <clears throat> their years till they turn five and six and 10 and 13, they're a gadol, then they become 20, they reach maturity. Imagine a t- person who just turned 20 in one minute. Take a baby and just, you're 20 years old. So when Amisal was in Mitzayim, the state that we were in, if we were to grow slow, the, the, the klipot would take away the light and it would not be a geula. Hashem brings all the entire light in one night. And that is Laila Kayom Ya'ir, the Laila, night, night of Pesach is a night that actually shines like, like the day. It's not a night, it's actually a day. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes away, this level does not stay with a person, does not stay with our nation. HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes away that level, that maturity, because that matu- we're not born with the maturity of a 20-year-old. We're actually meant to gain our maturity. We're meant to become. But to be redeemed from that original state of exile that we were in, of that false identity that we were in, we had to be struck with our ultimate maturity in order to show us our potential. And that's the redemption of Mitzrayim. Obviously, to get there, this whole world, this is a world of avodah, of acquiring, of becoming, of a process. We're not just here to get it. This is the process of Sefirat Omer. And on Shavuot, on Shavuot, actually a person regains the level that they, their absolute maturity that they had in Lela Seder, but they gain it through work. They gain it, now it's theirs. And the Kabbalah, it's called that the Shavuot is connected to the level of Ketel. And that's a little bit what we want to talk about, Ketel. Okay. So if we look at Matan Torah, if we look right at the experience of Matan Torah, imagine this, the entire nation is already standing there with Moshe Rabbeinu and Har Sinai. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is starting, he's giving now the Torah. So how does it start? Vaydaber Elohim et kol advarim ele lemor. This is like an introduction to the Aserat Adibor. And then it starts, Anochi Adonai Elohecha. It actually starts with the, with the, uh, words of the Seret Adibot. Let's look at Rashi here. Et kol what is this? What is it telling you? What is the Pasuk saying? What did Hashem say in this Pasuk? God said the things that He's about to say. The Seret Adibot is what He said. What did He say in this Pasuk? What is Lemo? Melamed. Shamar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Aseret Adibot Bedibur Echad. Over here in this experience, before HaKadosh Baruch Hu said the Ten Commandments in the form of Ten Commandments, he first said the Ten Commandments in the form of one commandment. The entire Ten Commandments were said at once. And un, for a human being, it's impossible. So that means that the first experience of Matan Torah was Am Yisrael is standing in front of the mountain. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu first comes and gives him the entire, everything Lemor at one time. And then later on, we know that Aserat Adibrod have 620 words. That's Keter Milim. That's exactly, that's the Keter. 
the Keter that we reach on Shavuot, this crown. Keter itnu lecha Hashem elokenu. Malachim amone mala, imamcha Yisrael kvutse mata, we tell HaKadosh Baruch Hu that the angels in the heavens, they crown you with the kingship. When? When do they do this? When Am Yisrael down here, kvutse mata, when us, when us in this world, we use our free will, we use our bechira to say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you're our king. That's how we give him the crown. That's keter itnu lecha. So this day of Shavuot, the first experience is that we get there is that we get the experience of a Keter. Shavuot is a Yom Tov. I guess I had a class now about all the names of Shavuot and all this Inyana, but the name Shavuot is, is, is a comp- compilation of weeks of details. It's a bunch of details. All these details are necessary to reveal something that's above all them and above all these Inyana. In a deeper way, we say, Uvau kulam b'brit yachad, na'ase v'nishma amru ke'echad. Am Yisrael standing in front of Har Sinai. It's called a brit. This is the brit. Moshe Rabbeinu did a brit with them. There was mamash a brit, a covenant. And in a deep way, to understand that this day is the day that we came into brit with Hashem, that we're in a treaty with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And this is a very deep inyan. People speak about Shmirat Abrit, the guarding of the Brit, which is very, very important. Not to look where we shouldn't look, not to see where we shouldn't see, there's no question about it. But that's, so to speak, the Sur Mirah, that's the, the, how not to, to, to damage our Brit with Hashem. But what is our Brit? What is our Brit? Like it says in Kadosh Brutaz Moshe Rabbeinu, Inna Anochi Koret Brit, Neged Kol Amcha Esen Niflaot, Asher Lo Nivru Bechol Haaretz Ubechol Agoyim. וראה כל העם אשר אתה בקרבו את מעשה השם כנורא הוא, אשר אני עושה עמך. זאת אומרת, the brit that we have with הקדוש ברוך הוא is that we tell הקדוש ברוך הוא, we're, gonna, we're treating you totally different. We're totally different. And you treat us totally different. Totally different. We're not a, we're not a regular human being. It's not a regular human relationship that this human has with nature. This is not what's going on with Am Yisrael. We're in a brit. We're in a deep, intimate treaty, in a deep, 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 the deepest that exists. And when you get there, of course the beginning is a bunch of details, and a bunch of Shavuot, and we count this midah, and we count this, and we count this. But all these details are there to bring us to a relationship, to a keter, to a deep, deep, intimate relationship that we have with Kuchabrichu, with the king of the world. Like the Balatanyak says, V'zetachlit kol adam, v'tachlit briyato, בריאת כל העולמות, עליונים ותחתונים, להיות לא יתברך דירה זו בתחתונים. The tachlis of the whole world, that the Kadosh Baruch Hu makes, the Creator makes dimensions that are further from Him and further from Him and further from Him. So in the furthest dimension, there could be a dira, there could be a dwelling place. So that means that where is high and where is low, where is heaven and where is earth? השמיים שמיים לאדוני, והארץ נתן לבני אדם. That's what it says in the Pasuk. The heavens are high and the earth is low. That's true till Matan Torah. That's the Midrash says. That was true till Matan Torah. At Matan Torah, וירד השם על הר סיני, ומשה עלה אל האלוהים. God comes down and man goes up. Because in the world of Keter, in this world, this experience of Keter, once we get to the place of Keter, what's up and what's down? Everything is, you're in a world of unity, in a world of one. What a deep place, what an amazing place. We all want to get there. How do we get there? How do we get to this world of Keter? How do we get to the Shavuot, to this experience of this breath, of this unity with Hashem? Rav Tzadak HaKoyen, the Holy Rav Tzadak HaKoyen, teaches us, Torah and Mitzvot, he says it many times, Reshut Aleph, Reshut Beis, Reshut Gimel, and Tzitka Tzadik, in many letters over there, he speaks about this. I'm quoting one line, but it's good to see inside. Reb Tzadik Koyen, the deepest of the deepest thinkers. That the Torah and Mitzvot, who does the Torah go to? Where does the water go to? מישהו מרגיש חסר, a person that feels that I'm חסר, הוא מבקש השלמה, I need to be completed, creator of the world. 
I don't want to stay in this animalistic state that I'm in with the nefesh behemit. Humanity starts, the development of humanity starts from animal to man. We start off in Pesach, Chodesh Nisan, Tale. It's the ram. We go on to Iyar, to the bull, to the cow. Animals, these are animals. This is our animalistic beginning. We go to Sivan, we go to Teomim, to human, to twins. A person that knows is chaser, mvakesh hashlama. Creator of the world, I need you so much. And you know, Shavuot is the perfect, perfect time for all this to happen. Amazing how, how much better and better it gets. That this day is the day, Yom Yistalkut of David HaMelech. David Melech Yisrael Chai Vekayam. Our King, our Mashiach. That's alive. David Melech Yisrael Chai Vekayam. The day of his Yistalkut, the day of his Hilula, the day of his rejoice, the day of his inclusion in the One. The day he came into the world, left the world. All those in, in your name is in Shavuot. And that's the specialty of Shavuot, of David HaMelech. That his whole life, he's margish chaser mevakesh hashlama. David HaMelech, his whole life, it's amazing. David HaMelech has to sin. The Gemara says, Kol HaMelech David chatay, and Allah Torah, he sins. And if you think he sinned, you're making a mistake. Did he sin? Did he not sin? He wrote it to Hillim. He said, I sinned. He's, he invented tshuva. The Gemara says, he, he wrote tshuva. said, so what is this? What's going on with David HaMelech? What, what's this mystery? So all the Ishbitzer explains, Rav Tzadik explains, that since David HaMelech had to reveal the level of tshuva, he had to be associated with sin. His sin was a chetim to his tshuva. How could you do about tshuva if you never, if you never sinned? It could be a tzadik, it can't be about tshuva. So of course, in the, on the job, he had, to, he had to sin. And so he looked at it like a sin, and he did tshuva his whole life. But HaKadosh Baruch knows, no, you're the king of Am Yisrael. The king goes down, the king is involved with the nation. David HaMelech is always feeling this ishtokekut, this yearning. It's amazing to think, David HaMelech, you think that he was just a king, a politician, chas v'shalom, head of the Sanhedrin, speaking with the Sanhedrin, Hashem imo, alecha imo, b'chol makom, his Torah. David HaMelech's words not only became tefillah, became Torah. His crying, his trials with his kids, with his wife, with his king, with everything in his life became Torah. This is Tyra, this is Tehillim. There's also the day of Istakut of the Baal Shem Tov. Also, the flow of Mashiach, you see, on this day is very, very strong. So this experience of Keter, we'll just do a little bit of this. This feeling of this day, how do we, so what do we do with all this? How do we get to the Keter and what do we do? So Arizal writes, Dan Haga of this night, he writes that, Kimat kol chayet le chaya adam kluim balayla zeh, imishan. It's almost as the, a person's entire life is depends on this night if he sleeps, if he's up all night. And he, Arizal writes that if a person stays up all night, it's a hora'ah, that means it's a heavenly sign that this person will complete his year. He'll have a total year. He won't die that year. Yashlim Shnato. Very, very important night. And at the peak of the night, right before Netz, right before Lot HaShachar, we go to the mikveh. We go to the mikveh. And this mikveh is not a regular mikveh. This mikveh, we go to the mikveh Erev Yom Tov to, 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 to gain Kedusha, to prepare ourselves to receive the Kedusha of Shabbat of Yom Tov. But in every level, like we see the Kohen Gadol and Yom Kippurim, they went to the mikveh five times. Every time he went in, he went out. There's always levels and levels and levels. And even though we go to the mikveh on Erev Shavuot, we go to the mikveh again on the night of Shavuot before the nets to receive this high level of kedusha that's happening at this time, to be in tune, to be aligned, to be connected to. Because when HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives the Torah, it's not just then. Bayamim ahem, bazman azeh. That means that that experience that happened is not just happening in history, it's happening. And as we prepare ourselves, as we say, we want you, we're waiting for you, we're awake for you, we miss you, we need you, we love you. When he comes down and says, because every year, and every year he says it 
all in one word in a way that no one could understand it. Every year he brings us to the experience of the Ketel. And this tefillah, there's four, we, do, we do four times, dip in the mikveh four times, a very simple tefillah, just yud, and then hey, and then vav, and then hey. Very, very not common also, just to, because pashut baketel, because the highest level is re reaching pshutus, where you're just in unity with the Shem's name itself. So this is a little bit of preparation, also of, of Ratzon, also of wanting to be with Hashem. Another very important thing on this night is to, since David HaMelech, if a person doesn't know what to do, to focus on Tehillim, try to focus on Tehillim. Tehillim in general, just to finish with this one, one word about Tehillim, there's different shitot in saying Tehillim. Some people, they zug Tehillim, they say a lot of Tehillim. It becomes very, very important. And the Magid, the Magid writes, if a person wants to memalel gvurot Hashem, a person wants to crush the dinim, then they say the whole Tehilim. So it's one sheet of the say Tehilim. Mm -hmm. But if we look at Tehilim, Tehilim is, is the deep, deep stories of, of all humanity. Tehilim is actually written by ten tzaddikim, the Gemara says in Psachim, and the Zohar writes, and David and Melch compiled them. But each Tehilim is a standalone uh, Torah, a standalone event, standalone dialogue between David HaMelech and HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the entire world. It's very kedai to invest in learning Tehillim, and studying Tehillim a little bit, to, to unfold the magic and the connection and the dvikut that exists in Tehillim. Te, David HaMelech is, David Melech is El Chai Kayam. What this means to us, amongst other things, is that he's our king. And the king, the Rambam writes, the king is the Lev Auma. The king is the heart of the nation. That means the heart knows feeds everything and is influencing everything, influenced by everything, connecting to everything. And David HaMelech in his Tehillim compiled every, every thank you, every complaint, every nisayon, every trial that every Yehudi will ever have. Ever. When we say Tehillim, we could connect to it. When a person says Tehillim, if they ever stumble upon a pasuk or something that they feel specially connected to, they should not move away from that place. They should stay there and have gained vikut in Hashem. Yiratzon that Hashem should give us this Shavuot, an experience of dvekut in Hashem, an experience of ubao kulam bebrit yachad, naase v'nishma amruk keechad. We should feel the brit yachad, we should feel the specialty of our nation, of Am Yisrael. Wherever we are, we're all unified with our King, with our Creator. We love Him and He loves us. We're awaiting Him, we know He's awaiting us. And Yir Ratzon, that in this Shavuot, HaKadosh Baruch Hu should awaken the love in all the worlds. Till this physical dimension and show us his presence and his awareness and his love and his geula. Question. Um, can, can we say the following? That, uh, you know, you had Adam Avinu before the Chet. He lost it. Uh, well, he was in Gan Eden for 30 hours. Yeah? And then we, we 36, yeah. 36 hours. And then he, we come we come to the very low point of God going up to the seventh heaven. And then from Avram upwards we were being purified and we come up to Matan Torah at the same level of purity as Adam Rishon. Correct. Before the Chet. And that lasts forty days. Correct. Until Chet Egel. So is there is there some can, can we tap into that energy now? As we come into the Shavuot, can we tap into those 40 days in which we actually maintain, as, 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 um, achieve that state of holiness? Of course, of course. That we're not only can we, we're, that's what we're meant to do. Like I said before, the Jewish calendar is arranged in a way that as every year that you get back to the same landmark, same time, that that same relationship is awakening. That means in heaven, 
It's always Chanukah, it's always Purim by Hashem. It's always Pesach, it's always Shavuos by Hashem. Down here, under time and under space, Shavuos shines, that light of Shavuos comes in after this time. But at that time, the more you could, the more you could be connected to what happened and realize that's happening and invite that into your life and make that a reality because that's really what's happening. The reality around us that we see, the physical, that's, that's the conditions that we're in now. But what's happening is, that's what's happening. To add to this, a very interesting thought that I saw yesterday, because one of the interesting sugyot in the Gemara is Moshe Osif Yom Echad Midato, the date of Matan Torah. So the Gemara in Shabbat over there that discusses, it's like, you think the date is a simple thing, right? No, it's not. Like when, <laughs> when they come, when they travel, the whole... Is, and, and there's a concept there that's called Moshe Osif Yom Echad Midato, where Hashem tells Moshe, you know, you can take two days and he's, okay, he's gonna add another day. And this is a very deep concept that Moshe really symbolizes dot and that ability to add a day from his own dot. Very, very deep. But one of the things that, that I got through, I don't know, through learning that topic and be fascinated by it was this concept of Yom Velayla and Laila Veyom, which is, I want to bring in, because Keter, Keter is really the place that includes all the opposites. So when you get there, like, everything is, the night, nine of the day, everything is, is over there. It's all in the, in, the, in the form of one before it takes on the individual form. So what's interesting is the difference between Am Yisrael and the nations of the world in this Nikvuda is that by the nations of the world, Alayla Olecha Charayom, right? This day, if you have a holiday, it's the yeah. day, and then the, then the follow, it goes into the night. The, follow, the holiday goes into the night. By Am Yisrael, it's the night, that leads into the day. Mm-hmm. And this transformation, I want to look deeper, but I believe this transformation happened also, and this happened because over there is the day and the night. How did Moshe count? It's Yom Belayla Shimo. If you look at the sugya over there, and this is where that thing happened. Where did, where did we become a different nation? Meaning, if the attitude of the world, and we'll see deeper a little bit, what's so important about this? Because the day symbolizes, what's, what is the day and what is the night? So sometimes you have a person that the beginning of their life is difficult. And then their end is good. Versus a person at the beginning is fantastic and the end is horrible. So that's versus the nations. If the immature attitude is, I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry, then what do I have? I have a great day, my friend. But after the day, what comes? The night. You're done, my friend. <laughs> where are you going from that? Because if during the day, what do you do? But Am Yisrael and this shift, where we were, what came up to Hashem and to Hashem and this Keter, we totally changed to a point, our time changed, our fabric changed, everything changed. And it changed that our night becomes before our day. That means that we first experience galut. We first experience hardship. And in that hardship, in the night, is the time to become. And what you became at night, Baruch Hashem, then by day, that's what you are. But the becoming is by night. And that that change between day and night and night and day, that crisscross, is also an aspect of Keter that can only happen that when you go into the place where night and day is one. That's when you can switch it back. That, 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 yeah. That's why it says in the Gemara that, that by the Goim, <laughs> it's very interesting. By Yehudi, Makadosh Baruch Makdim Refuah Lamaka. You guys heard of this concept, right? Makdim Refuah Lamaka. Because Baruch brings the Refuah before the Maka. The first he creates the cure, and only then he creates the disease that leads to the need to the cure. But that's only true for the for Am Yisrael. Mm-hmm. By the guy, it's the opposite. Akadosh Baruch Makdim Refuah Makala Refuah. He first gives them. Why is that? That's exa- it's exactly the same thing. If you could handle the maka, if you could handle some night, then Am Yisrael said, "Yeah, we can handle it. We can handle. It. We're going to fight our animal soul. We're going to not lose your tzach, lose signal, lose enough. It's not easy, but we're going to do it for you, Hashem. We trust you. We're going to." Totally harness our animal and become Adam. Wow, what a mission. Take over. That's what you're saying. To become Ani Amalti Elohim Atem. Uvnei Adam Kulchem. That passage that you were saying to him is when they said in Matan Torah, Hashem said, graduation. You guys graduated to the level of Adam Rishon before the Chet. Fada, live forever. Ani Amalti Elohim Atem. Okay, Chet Egel brought it back. But that's really the real level that they reached. Ah, Gavad, we could go on forever. Yeratan on this on this holy day and this holy Chag Shavuot that Hashem is giving us. Uh, we we'll finish with one beautiful thing. Rav Nachman Breslov writes: Once a year came to Rav Nachman Breslov and he told him that he wants his gula to love the Torah, to remember the Torah, to, to, to know. The Gemara says to to, know, to remember the Torah, you need to see out the Rav Nachman told him, my deep friend, the Torah is a kala. It's a it's a beautiful woman. 
בתורה יש ראשי תיבות, ישראל, ראשי תיבות, יש 60 ריבו אופנים לתורה. relationship with the Torah, where we feel the Torah is a live, godly being that prays for us, that has a relationship with us, that educates us. May we all find ourselves in love and a real, real dynamic relationship with Hashem, privately and collectively, and we should receive the Geulah with mm-hmm. tremendous joy and happiness. Amen. Amen.